moment to welcome our new student regents to the board. Sam Schroeder joins us from the universe. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm at the wrong spot. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. I'd like to call to order the June 20th, 2024 meeting of the Board of Regents. Please take the roll call. Regent Fabraju? Here. Regent Herman? Here. Here. Regent Claire. Regent Regent O'Connor? Sorry. Regent Schaefer? Here. Regent Shear? Here. Regent Stark? Here. Regent Whites? Here. Regent Wilmot? Here. A quorum is present. Okay. In your materials, you have copies of the minutes from the meeting on April 19th, 2024, and April 26, 2024. I'd entertain a motion for approval. I'll make it. Second. Second. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Roll call, please. Regent Devraju? <coughs> Here. Regent Herbin? Here. Uh, Regent Schroeder? Yes. Uh, Regent Kenny? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Whites? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. The motion passes. In compliance with the Nebraska Open Meetings Act, the board has posted a copy of the act on the south wall of the boardroom behind the seating area for the press. Before we start with the presentations, I'd like to ask, uh, I'm going to ask our regent here from Kearney to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, visible with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, at this point I would like to now introduce our newest members to the board, our student regents. Sam Schroeder joins us from the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Sam is from Seward and is entering his junior year as a political science major with a minor in public law. He is a Kearney Law Opportunity Scholar with goals to attend Nebraska Law. Sam has been involved in the Honors Program at St. Teresa of Calcutta Newman Center, the Undergraduate Research Fellowship, Order of Omega Greek Honor Society, Pre-Law Society, and NU <laughs> Student Alliance. He has served in student government since his freshman year and was also president of Phi Kappa Alpha Fraternity. Welcome, Sam. <laughs> Elizabeth Herburn joins us from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Elizabeth is an incoming senior majoring in history with minors in political science, communications, and national security on, and is on the pre-law track. She is a member of the Honors Program, Phi Sigma Alpha Political Science Honors Fraternity, Order of Omega Greek Honor Society, Peer, Education, Peer Educator of, for the Center of Advocacy, Respon, excuse me, Response in Education, and Volunteer for Launch Leadership. She is Vice President of Committees for Phi Me Soror Sorority, and she has served in a variety of leadership positions with ASUN and is the founding chair of the Sexual Assault Prevention Standing Committee. Elizabeth plans to take a gap year after graduating in May and will likely pursue law school in the future. Welcome, Elizabeth. <laughs> Parenthi Deva Raju joins us from the University of Nebraska Medical Center. She is a fourth-year medical student from Omaha. She's attended UNO, where she studied biology and piano performance. Last year, Parenta was director of academic affairs for the Student Senate, where she spearheaded changes to UNMC's mock interview week. This year, she and her team hope to increase cross-campus and cross-college student engagement and enhance mental health services for students. After medical school, Parenta hopes to attend a medical residency program to specialize in psychiatry. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ishani Ahmadan, representing the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Unfortunately, he is in Dallas for a summer. In she is in Dallas for a summer internship and can't be here today. But we look forward to seeing her at our August meeting. By way of introduction, Ashani is an Omaha native and Millard North alum who is currently a third-year CBA scholar at UNO and is studying business administration with her concentrations in HR management, business analytics, management and leadership, and marketing with a minor in public health. After graduation, she plans to work in HR management. She is committed to fostering meaningful change on campus by advocating for and collaborating with the UNO student community. <clears throat> With that, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all of our student regents. The voice and presence of our student regents on this board is invaluable. We are glad to have you here and look forward to your participation this next year. President Kaborik, as I look across the room, I see some new faces sitting in our faculty senate seats as well. Would you be kind enough to make those introductions? Uh, good morning. My pleasure. Thank you, Regent Schaefer. Um, it's always a pleasure to welcome our new uh, amazing faculty to this to this uh, to the board meeting. And so we have four new members we want to want to introduce, introduce this morning. Um, Dr. Daniel Chaffin, Chaffin is an associate professor of management at the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Uh, the, the majority of Dr. Chaffin's research focuses on student positive psychology psychological capital, but he has also written about academic integrity, strategic leadership, and received the best paper award for research <clears throat> message. Dr. Chaffin teaches classes in strategic management and entrepreneurship. His approach is to find more ways to help students practice the concepts rather than talk about them. For example, in the entrepreneurship class, student groups create and execute a unique startup during the semester, including developing a product, pitching for financing, clearing legal requirements, creating a website, and selling. Really pleased to have you here. Welcome, Daniel. <laughs> Dr. Pete Eklund is the Hickson Lead Endowment Professor of Music and Director of Choral Activities at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Dr. Eklund was recently named one of the national quarterfinalists for the first ever Grammy National Music Teacher of the Year and was a national finalist for the NFHS Outstanding Music Educator in 2019. Considered one of the most active and versatile international conductors today, Dr. Eklund's schedule averages 60 national and international concerts annually and includes a wide array of scholarly, professional, orchestral, collegiate, festival, all-star, and youth and student ensembles. Trained as a classical pianist and organist, Dr. Eklund is now a strong advocate for music spanning all genres. Welcome, Pete. <laughs> Dr. Joseph Sue is professor for the physical therapy program and director of the Global Health Opportunities Program in the College of Allied Health Professions at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Dr. Sue oversees the international program in physical therapy and establishes educational programs with partners around the world. He studies human movement and gait biomechanics as well as motor learning and human performance. With his research supported by the NIH, NASA, Nebraska Space Grant, and other entities. Dr. Sue received the College of Allied Health Professions Excellence in Research Award in 2014 and the UNMC Outstanding Faculty Mentor of Graduate Students in 2022. Welcome aboard. Thanks for being here, Joseph. <laughs> and finally, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Patty Bick, an Associate Professor of Finance, Banking, and Real Estate at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Dr. Bick received her PhD in Finance from Penn State and was a faculty member at Tulsa for eight years before coming to UNO. Her areas of research include executive compensation and mergers and acquisitions. She currently teaches the undergraduate capstone course for the business and finance concentration, as well as financial management for MBA students. Welcome, Patty. You know, again, I want to welcome all of our faculty senate. Um, they represent an amazing group of faculty across all of our campuses. 
I'm not sure if most people realize that serving as faculty senate presidents is something you take on in addition to your day jobs and how much time and effort uh, is involved in represent, representing the faculty voice. So we truly appreciate your work, your partnership, and we look forward to working closely together in the years ahead to move our university forward. With that, I'll turn it back over to the chair. At the beginning of each meeting for the Board of Regents, we take time to recognize those persons who all too often don't receive the recognition that they deserve. The Board of Regents believes that it is vitally important that we acknowledge your commitment as well as your contributions to the university. To have been nominated by either a supervisor or a fellow worker is an honor in and of itself. As the kudos recipients are announced, please come to the podium and join the Regent making the presentation. Following each presentation, we will take pictures that will then appear on our website. The president, chancellor, recipients, family, and supporters will be part of the photo. The first kudos recipient is Eileen John from the University of Nebraska at Kearney, and the award will be presented by Regent Wilmot. <clears throat> On behalf of the Board of Regents, I'm pleased to present a kudos award to Ms. Eileen John. <clears throat> She's the Honors Program Outreach Coordinator at the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Eileen came to UNK as a student in August of 1991 from Davenport, Nebraska. She was an Omaha World Herald and Kearney Hub Scholar and was part of the very first UNK freshman class. Eileen holds a BA in music from UNK, a Master of Music from the Kansas State University, and a K-12 vocational instrumental music teaching certification. She says of her career path, in many ways it shows me. Opportunities have come my way that have suited my abilities well and that I have enjoyed immensely. For 12 years, she served as an adjunct faculty member in UNK's Department of Music and Performing Arts. She directed the Nebraska Cats Show Choir and taught voice lessons intermittently. In 2021, she began working as the Honors Program Outreach Coordinator. Her responsibilities include communicating with current and prospective Honors Program students, overseeing publicity and event planning, facilitating events such as the Omaha World Herald and Carney Hub Scholars Day, Convocation, Awards Banquet, and Senior Showcase, coordinating recruitment efforts, supervising honors envoys and student workers, and providing one-on-one -on -one support. I value the relationships with students, faculty, staff, and administration and alumni, Eileen says. The people are what makes this job and this place precious to me. Honors Program Director Angela Holman praises Eileen. She works every day to support students, and it's an amazing asset to the Honors Program and the university, and both are better with her here. Congratulations goes to Eileen John, one talented, creative, caring person who's making an incredible difference. With Eileen are her husband, Mick, daughter and current UNK student, you raised her right, <laughs> Emma, son Heath, mother Ruth Olick, and Aunt Jane Weenus. And that concludes it, and thank you very much for being here. <laughs> Congratulations, Eileen. Regent Shear will present the Kudos Award to the Nebraska Vet Diagnostic Center at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln.
I thank you for the opportunity. You don't know how uh, nice it is to actually have a mic that I can talk into again. I sort of miss that. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to listen. So, uh, On behalf of the Board of Regents, I am pleased to present the Kudos Award to the Nebraska Veterinary Diagnostics Center team at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. This award celebrates their dedication, innovative approaches, and tireless efforts in safeguarding the health of Nebraska's livestock, pets, wildlife, and the University of Nebraska-Lincoln community. The Vet Diagnostic Center serves Nebraska's agriculture producers and producers around the world and is recognized for its expertise in diagnosing diseases in cattle and other food animals. In addition to serving agricultural producers, it also provides testing and diagnostic services for wild wildlife and companion animals. <clears throat> The center demonstrates exceptional teamwork with its partners, including the Centers for Disease Control, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services. This is a collaborative effort that underscores the importance of veterinary and diagnostic facilities in protecting both human and animal populations from emerging health threats. For example, the Diagnostic Center has been a key source of information about the recent strain of avian influenza that affects dairy cattle. The team is learning how to mitigate the risk of African swine fever to prevent the virus from entering the United States. The center also plays a crucial role in conducting surveillance and diagnostic testing on samples collected from poultry, livestock, pets, and wildlife, and the ability to rapidly scale up testing capacity as experienced during the pandemic has positioned UNL to play a pivotal role in surveillance and diagnostic efforts, facilitating early detection, containment, and mitigation <clears throat> strategies. Joining me today are representatives from the Nebraska Veterinary and Diagnostic Center, Zachary Brown, the night manager, Deborah Royal, the quality control manager, and Scott McVeigh, professor and director of the School of Veterinary Medicine and Bi Biomedical Sciences. Please join me in welcoming and thanking the Nebraska Veterinary Diagnostic Center for their dedication to the University of Nebraska. Congratulations. Next, Regent Stark will present the Kudos Award to Jacqueline Pavlik from the University of Nebraska Medical Center. On behalf of the Board of Regents, I'm pleased to present a Kudos Award to Jackie Pavlik. Um, Research Operations Administrator in UNMC's Department of Surgery. Um, spent a lot of money there. <laughs> Jackie consistently strives to expand, support, and lead the research infrastructure within the department. She finds ways to do streamline processes, ensure efficiency, and increase productivity, including the creation of an online process so her team can keep her updated on projects. Jackie reviews uh, grant applications and reports she approves uh, contracts and purchases and created the infrastructure to support clinical trials in the department by recruiting FTEs to support faculty who fall outside the cardiovascular and oncology clinical trials. Um, her nominators recognize that Jackie has created and championed work environment that allows members to collaborate and support surgery investigators. Her expertise in research administration has led to the department to be more successful in its growth and research. One nominator said, we continue to expand the number of funded clinical trials thanks to Jackie and all of her hard work. We're gonna need you for AAU. Um, and said another, her professional, professionalism and expertise in research administration has inspired and motivated all of us on the team to strive for excellence. We all say, let's ask Jackie. 
Uh, at least once a week, one nominator said, adding that the department chair also recalled her work very impressive. Today, Jackie is joined by her supervisor, Tracy Rowe. Um, join me in thanking Jackie for her accountability, expertise, and can-do attitude, and the remarkable impact she has had on research infrastructure and in UNMC's Department of Surgery. Thanks. <laughs> Jackie, there you go. Congratulations, Jackie. Chris Load from the University of Nebraska at Omaha is our final recipient of the award, which will be presented by Regent Whites. <clears throat> On behalf of the Board of Regents, I'm pleased to present a kudos award to Chris. Is it Lodi? Lodi. Assistant to Dr. Rich Klein, Vice Chancellor of Institutional Effectiveness and Student Success, and as Assistant to Dr. Kathy Pettit, Associate Vice Chancellor and Dean of Students at University of Nebraska at Omaha. Chris has been at UNO since 2002. That's about when I left, actually. With previous roles in the Department of Recruiting Services and later undergraduate admissions, in her current role, Chris supports two of the busiest, most student-facing um, areas of the university. Managing the calendars of two vice chancellors oh, is no small feat. <laughs> I think it takes a giant computer. And Chris handles this with tact and with grace. Barb Harvey, executive assistant to the chancellor, says that Chris's roles have always had her communicating with students, faculty, staff, and community partners. She treats everyone with the dignity and extends beyond and respect no matter who they are. Her positivity and her desire to help others embodies the maverick spirit, and she extends beyond the borders of our campus. Chris often sees our students, I love this, Chris often sees our students during her commute to work on the city bus. And when they approach her with questions, she's always opening to listening to them and guiding them to the correct resources. Great. <laughs> you can be a tour bus guide too. Now, today Chris's guests are Dr. Rich Klein, Vice Chancellor of Institutional Effectiveness and Student Success, and Dr. Kathy Pettit, Associate Vice Chancellor and <clears throat> Dean of Students. Please join me in thanking Chris for her dedication to the University of Nebraska at Omaha. As many of you know, Jane Sutton will retire at the end of June and step down as the executive assistant to the president of the University of Nebraska. Jane has worked in the office of president for 38 years, serving alongside eight different presidents. I think I can speak for all eight of those presidents in saying that very little would have gotten done without Jane's exceptional assistance. She is a true professional who keeps the Varner Hall trains running on the tracks and on time and she will leave big shoes to fill. I have asked Regent Claire to offer a resolution on behalf of the board to show our support and gratitude for Jane's contributions and efforts in her service to the University of Nebraska. Regent Claire. Thank you. This is really an honor. Uh, 
and it's also very sad too. Um, you know, I think <clears throat> I think you learn a lot about uh, a person, uh, particularly somebody my age, your age, uh, based on how their children are. And uh, I will forever be indebted to Jane and um, her family for the way their son David took my son under his wing. Uh, David was a senior, big stud football player at, at the Lincoln Southeast High School. And, um, and uh, my son was a punk sophomore uh, on the team as well. And, and David, my son couldn't drive, wasn't old enough. Uh, but David took him uh, uh, to practices, took him to games, and really showed him the ropes. And so that I've, I've always had a debt of gratitude. So when like Hank Bounds called one day and said, hey, one of our, one of, uh, uh, our staff members, kids, David Sutton, is looking for a job. Does anybody know any, any, any uh, employers that are hiring? And I said, yes, I do. And I'll call and vouch for him. So um, it went a long way with me still does today, and it speaks volumes about you as a person and as a parent, in addition to your great skills as a, as a uh, uh, executive assistant here for the university. So whereas Jane Sutton is retiring at the end of June after 38 years as executive assistant to the president of the University of Nebraska, 38 years, that's remarkable. Jane has worked with eight different presidents, each of which had their own unique leadership style, and although Jane, ever the diplomat, would never describe it this way, each with their own special quirks. <laughs> and whereas Jane, a lifelong Nebraskan and lifelong public servant, previously spent four years working in the Nebraska governor's office, and whereas Jane is a model of true professionalism, setting the example for how staff in Varner Hall should conduct themselves in representing the president, and whereas Jane is a master juggler and puzzler, somehow taking infinite requests for meetings and engagements for the president and making it all work in the daily calendar with such efficiency that it would be easy to be fooled into thinking it was easy. When in fact, without someone with Jane's attention to detail, speed, and quality, the president would quite literally be lost. And whereas under Jane's leadership, Varner Hall is a place where every guest, no matter who they are, is greeted warmly, offered water or coffee, treated with the highest level of respect, and comes away having a positive experience with the president's team. And whereas Mimi... Jane is in high demand among five grandchildren who have specifically requested that she visit them for a hundred days after she's done working. <laughs> now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Regents takes Jane's, uh, thanks Jane Sutton for her decades of leadership and service to the University of Nebraska and the entire state and wishes her, Mark, and their family all the best as they enjoy a well-deserved retirement. Congratulations. There's no objection. I suggest that this resolution be adopted by acclamation. Second. Having no objections, it is so adopted. Thank you, Jane, for everything that you've done for the university. <clears throat> While our kudos guests are most welcome to stay and may observe the balance of our meeting, if you wish to leave, we will take no offense, and you may do so at this time. Thank you for coming. The standing rules of the board provide that any person or persons oh, 
Oh, I need to turn it over again. I'm getting ahead of myself again. All right, uh, President Kaborik, uh, would you like to make any comments before we start the public comment? Yeah, we're going to get some control over the chair here. And, uh, get a, get a control. Just so eager to be here to, with all of you today. Uh, no, good morning. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, unfortunately, Jane, I think, has already left. But um, um, having sit in the seat now for six months, um, what an incredible, what an incredible person, and everything that Regent Claire um, talked about her is exactly true. Um, She's a true professional, really. Uh, I can uh, vouch for the quirks and the uh, huge demand, and she is a huge professional. But, you know, I still remember walking into this building 27 years ago, and, and I still remember Jane Sutton um, greeting me. And I knew this was the right place for, for me to be. Um, and so I just want to echo what Regent Claire said and and, um, and what an incredible um, human. We're going to really, really miss Jane. Uh, I also want to, I think I, uh, I, when I introduce the faculty, uh, we also have one other new guest in the room that I want to introduce, although he's not new to us, but uh, uh, I want to introduce uh, interim UNK Chancellor, Dr. Charlie Bicek, who uh, not new to UNK, um, but new to the role, and uh, told me yesterday he, he even came down and sat through the audit committee with us and uh, said, he, <laughs> said he hadn't been in the room for two years. But, um, Charlie, we are so excited to have you here. You know, I know we all missed um, uh, Chancellor Christensen and his 20-plus years of service, but I couldn't think of a better person to fill those shoes and keep UNK moving and all the momentum going. So, Charlie, thanks for being here. Thanks for stepping up. Glad you're on the team. Well, it's, it's hard to believe that we're already um, halfway through 2024, and um, I still remember um, six, seven months ago when when uh, Regent Claire and Regent uh, Schaefer stopped by and asked me if I would be having any, any interest in uh, mm -hmm. serving as the interim president. And, um, you know, that conversation in some ways feel like it was just yesterday, and as my wife reminds me, with my uh, accumulating gray hairs, it also seems like years ago. Um, so, um, but I think um, I think what we said at that time is that um, we were going to keep our foot on the accelerator. We were not going to keep the seat warm. There's this institution is too important to pause, and um, you know. The history books will be the ultimate judge, but I think uh, we've gotten a lot done in the last six months. So I just want to give my sincere thanks to the board uh, for all of your support, um, to our chancellors, uh, to our leadership teams on all our campuses. Uh, I know it hasn't been easy. I know I've pushed uh, and prodded, but it was all with the goal to make us better. So, um, But I want to just kind of highlight a few things that really, really stand out to me. Um, um, you know, when I accepted this role, I, I said that if we could make a difference in the life of, of one Nebraska kid, uh, I would view this as, as a positive, as a win, uh, as a success. And if there's one young person out there, you know, someone like me, a first generation kid from rural Nebraska, um, who now thinks college is possible, um, then we'll, we've done our jobs. And I think the reason we've been able to make a difference um, in a short amount of time is because we followed through on a, on a simple mission that I know this board supports. And that's, that's a simply to reconnect, um, reconnect with Nebraskans. Uh, we hear a, little, a lot about the public's declining trust in higher education. We've all seen the polls. We've read the news stories. But as someone who deeply believes in the value of higher education and the <clears throat> transformation it can make on one's lives. Um, you know, those kind of news stories are, are troubling to me. But here in Nebraska, we are blessed um, to have a, a citizenry that loves its university, wants it to be successful, and has consistently, consistently invested accordingly. I've seen this time and time again in my 27 years here. As I like to say, the people of Nebraska are our single biggest donor, year after year, for 155 years and counting. 
And I've always at the forefront of my mind that it's regular Nebraskans, like the people I grew up with in David City, who support the university day in and day out, are really the ones who will keep us running. And so I think it's also fair to acknowledge that sometimes we have gotten a bit too comfortable. We have been satisfied at times to be in our offices using this or that software program to decide our engagement with Nebraskans. When the truth is that nothing can replace getting in our cars, hitting the highways, and seeing this great state, going to visit people where they are. And I, and I learned this from, from Governor Pillen. And nothing compares to that face-to-face -face human interaction and getting eyeball to eyeball and developing those relationships. So from day one, we made it a priority to reconnect with Nebraska. And, and first and foremost, I, I am so incredibly proud to stand up in February with this board um, and Governor Pillen to launch the Presidential Scholars. And most of you already know this is our, our full ride scholarship that also provides a $5,000 annual stipend to any Nebraska student that scores a perfect 36 on their ACT. And, um, you know, the nexus of that was pretty simple. Nebraskans are competitors. I know we all are competitors. I, we talked about that at, at dinner last night. And we simply got tired of seeing too many of our best and brightest being recruited away because we were being outcompeted by the scholarships that other places were, were offering. Uh, you know, we didn't have all the details when we announced the program. We're still figuring it out quite candidly. Um, but in a few short months, I can just tell you, we have gotten such positive reaction from students, from parents, from guidance counselors, from everyday Nebraskans saying, Thank you. Thank you for keep competing for our kids. Thank you for telling them that you want them in Nebraska. And the proof so far in only four short months is pretty impressive in my opinion. This fall, we will at least at this time, we're hoping to get more, enroll 17 presidential scholars on our campuses. That's almost double what we had last year. And I've had the privilege of meeting many of these students and their families personally, and I can tell you these are incredible young people who will be welcome to our campus in a few months, and they're exactly the kind of students we want to stay here and put down roots in Nebraska. And I wish I could share every one of their story because these kids are our are, are why. They become my why, why, why I'm excited to come to work each and every day, you know. Like one young woman from, from Lincoln who wants to be a teacher and was conscious about taking on debt, she was headed out of state to the University of Tulsa until she found about, out about our program. Or the young man in Pender, our first signee that Regent Shear uh, had the pleasure of joining me on, uh, the oldest of seven kids who, you know, hopefully we are developing a pipeline here, who will <laughs> this fall study at the Rake School, you know, without creating a financial burden on his, on his family. Or the young woman in Elkhorn who, who emailed us shortly after the scholarship was announced and said she had scored a 34 on her ACT, but believed that she worked a little bit harder, studied just a little bit more, she could get that 36 and wanted to know if she still qualified for the program. And of course, I, we said, absolutely, you know, go, go nail that thing. Well, fast forward to last week, um, she was one of the 28 seniors uh, recognized by Governor Pillen for scoring a perfect 36. So she did exactly what she told us she was gonna do. And I'm even more excited to see, say that she'll be enrolled at the UNL campus uh, this fall, studying actuarial science. So as the CFO and me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep in close contact with her um, about her future. And then I had the one mom whose son was likely also headed to Tulsa or Alabama uh, to pursue his dreams of becoming a, a brain surgeon or doing medical research. Um, she literally told me she burst into tears when she saw the news reports about the new scholarship program. And, and the young man just wrote, wrote me a, a handwritten thank you note this week saying, you know, this scholarship is why he is staying in Nebraska. And finally, there was the dad who told me simply that, thank you for bringing excitement back to academics. That's what we're trying to do, ladies and gentlemen, with this program. And that's why so, I'm so excited about it, and I'm so excited about the potential of expanding the program and 
with the budget that uh, you will consider later this afternoon because uh, we are excited about creating Nebraska's all-star academic team and, and we're going to do everything we can to it. But maybe the best part of the program is that, um, and I can just vouch for myself, it's not all about perfect 36 ACT scores. We want every young person who has a dream to think about how the University of Nebraska can help them pursue that. So what the program has done, is it's given us a hook to go visit schools, to talk to guidance counselors, principals, superintendents, and parents. Because whenever we go to a school, we don't just recruit that presidential scholar. We always visit with a large number of students to talk about the opportunities, the amazing opportunities at each of our campuses and how we can help them pursue that dream. So. Uh, we're just really excited about what we might be able to do this next year with a little programming, a little time. And, and, and uh, I just, again, want to thank the board um, for all your support um, in that program. You know, we're also connecting with Nebraskans in other ways. Um, I, I understand from rural Nebraska that your family situation, your location shouldn't be a burden on be, being able to get the skill set that you want for whatever that next step is in your life. Career promotion, just intellectual curiosity. So that's why we're also very proud of the partnership that we uh, signed earlier this spring with Google that will provide, um, you know, micro-credential uh, opportunities for Nebraska. And, and so far, without spending a dime on marketing, without promoting it, we've already had over 1,200 Nebraskans um, sign up for this. Um, I believe the stats are 20% of them are, are existing students, 40% are alumni, and 60%, you know, the other 40% are just Nebraskans yearning for this type of opportunity. So, um, you know, we're really excited about that program too and, and the opportunities about it. And, and those will be enrolling here very soon, and, and we're looking forward to, to expanding that going forward. You know, we've added to our leadership team in six months. You know, turnover change is a constant in an organization like the university. Um, if you would have asked me, um, if, if Regent Claire and Regent Schaefer would have said, you know, one of the things you're going to do is hire an athletic director uh, at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, I, I would have shook my head and said, no, you know, that's not on the bingo card. Um, let's go to the next. Um, but I knew, we already talked about this, when the position opened up, we had to move fast. And again, I, I want to thank the board for giving us all the support to do that. And I, I couldn't be more pleased with how um, Athletic Director Tori Dannon has, has hit the ground running, built a team already, and continued the amazing momentum that we have had uh, this year in Husker Athletics. And, and a shout out also to you know, Adrian Dow at UNO. I think he is just an incredible, incredible athletic director. I couldn't think of a better person to be leading the Mavericks. And, and um, you know, Carney had a great year too in athletics as well. So really excited about everything going on there. And, and then I, I already mentioned we're really happy to uh, welcome Charlie to the leadership team. Um, I know he will do really well. Um, going forward um, in leading UNK. You know, we also were continue to be really focused on priorities and made progress in areas important to Nebraska's, Nebraskans. You know, many of you were at the groundbreaking. Uh, it was one of the highlights in my six months of the new uh, USDA facility to be located at Innovation Campus, which will keep Nebraska at the forefront of ag research. So Chancellor Bennett, Vice President Bain, congratulations on that. Um, although the hard work is still before us, what a great, great event that was. And, and we're so excited about the momentum uh, for that facility and what it's going to do for our farmers and ranchers uh, right here in Nebraska. But we're also looking ahead to the next stage of phase of growth for the National Strategic Research Institute in our work in partnership with STRATCOM and keeping our men and women in uniform safe. Uh, we raised the ceremonial beam for the Christensen Rural Health Co Complex. Um, I just was out at Kearney a couple weeks ago and drove by, and that facility is coming out of the ground um, very, very quickly, and, and that's going to be a game changer for rural Nebraska in the healthcare care um, workforce uh, that we'd provide to our state. We announced the new research model where we will now combine UNL, UNMC, and Office of the President research, which is going to make us an immediate impact in our competitiveness compared to our Big Ten peers and help with our aspirations um, 
to get back into the AAU. And I continue to believe that's a goal worth fighting for. You know, Nebraskans expect their university to aim high. And I truly believe Nebraska, Nebraska belongs with the best of the best. And so I'm so excited to work with Dr. Gold, this board, on, on the strategy that we're going to implement to do that. You know, we have all the talent and we have all the potential in the world to get us there. It's going to take a lot of hard work and a willingness to challenge the status quo. But as a lifelong Nebraska, I know Nebraskans don't shy away from a challenge. And we're going to be up to it. And we're going to go compete. And we're going to get it done. And I'm excited to see, you know, I'm excited to welcome Chancellor Gold into the chair on July 1. And excited to see what he and uh, we can all do moving forward um, to make this university the best it can be and, and continue to accomplish all that we want to be. So, uh, again, my, my heartfelt sincerity, thank you for all your support. It's been a great six months. Um, to serve as the interim president of my alma mater has been an incredible honor and, uh, and the privilege of a lifetime. So, thanks again, Chairman Schaefer. The floor is back to you. Thank you, Chris. We do so very much appreciate you and your service to the university. So, appreciate you. With that, uh, we'll move on now to the public comment section. And the standing rules of the board provide that any person or persons may appear and address the Board of Regents on items that are not on the agenda. If an individual provides the corporation secretary with 24 hours notice, each person wishing, wishing to speak will be given three minutes to make remarks. However, it is my understanding at this point that we had no one notified the corporate secretary uh, with a desire to speak. Is that correct? That's correct? Okay, so with that, we'll move on to the what the standing rules further provide is that anyone desiring to speak concerning any item on the agenda for this meeting, regardless of notice, may do so. And at this point in time, I am also of the belief that no one has notified the corporate secretary that he or she would like to speak. Is that correct? Okay. And if there's anyone else that would like to come forward to address the board at this time, please please do so. And identify yourself and complete the sign-in sheet before you leave. You would then have three minutes to address the board. Any takers? <laughs> All right. There being none, uh, we'll close this uh, public comment period. It is now time to consider the consent agenda. The consent agenda, as indicated by its name, is moved and voted on as a group of action items as opposed to the administrative agenda where items are considered and discussed individually. With that said, unless one of my colleagues on the board wishes to consider any of these items in the administrative agenda separately, I would invite a motion to approve the consent agenda at this time. Second. Roll call, please. Regent Herbin. Yes. Regent Schroeder? Yes. Regent Tabaraju? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Whites? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. The motion passes. Okay, before I ask President Kaworik to guide us through the administrative agenda, I believe there is a motion for a change in the order in which we will consider the administrative agenda items. Regent Stark. Thank you, Regent Schaefer. Um, a number of faculty at the medical center and staff wanted to tune in early, so as part of that, I move that the Board of Regents adjust the order of items on today's agenda to consider items 11C1 and 11C2 at the beginning of the administrative agenda. Do we have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Regent Schroeder. Yes. Regent Dave Raju. Yes. Regent Herbin? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Whites? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. The motion passes. Okay. Uh, item 11C1 seeks your approval of the contract of employment and first amended and restated deferred compensation agreement for Dr. Jeffrey P. Gold. 
Okay, so uh, as many of you know, we've selected Chancellor Gold to be our next president of the university, and his term would start July 1. Uh, the contract has been made available to the public, and so what we're going to vote on at this point in time is approval of that contract so that come July 1, uh, Ch Chancellor Gold can then ascend into the position and take over the duties and role of being president of our university. Uh, with that, I, I can tell you I'm, I'm thrilled that uh, we have have someone of Jeff Gold's caliber and status and stature to step into the president's role and to lead us through these times at the university in which we're facing uh, uh, budget constraints, we're facing pressures from uh, to try to get back into the AAU, uh, looking at building a new hospital and stadium renovations, and there's, you know, there's competition, you know, President Kaborik just mentioned how, how we like to compete in Nebraska, but uh, there's also competition for resources and that being our time and our efforts and money and, and where people want to invest in the university. And so with that, I, I don't know that we could have found a better person to go out and to work with our stakeholders across the state and nation than, than Chancellor Jeff Gold. So with that, I will be wholeheartedly uh, voting yes in favor of the contract. So with that, is there a, a motion and a second? Any further discussion? Anyone have any comments they'd like to make? Uh, I do. Yes, sir. Um, I've been asked by um, a state legislator to uh, read a legislative resolution, 480, introduced by Senator Mike McDonald. Whereas Dr. Jeffrey Gold has served as Chancellor of the University of Nebraska Medical Center for the past 10 years. Whereas Dr. Gold has also served as Chancellor of the University of Nebraska at Omaha for four years. Whereas Dr. Gold has been the author of more than 200 peer-reviewed articles and more than 40 books and chapters. Whereas Dr. Gold has been active in the economic development arena, chairing various corporations including University of Nebraska Techn Technology Development Corporation, Med Medical Center Development Corporation, University Technology Transfer Corporation, Nebraska Enterprises, and Unitech Corporation. Whereas Dr. Gold's tenure, the University of Nebraska Medical Center has been highly ranked in a number of areas including research, primary care, physician assistant programs, among others. Whereas Dr. Gold has worked with Chancellor Christensen and President Carter to implement collaborative rural health program has worked with agricultural leaders across the state. Now, therefore, it be resolved by members of the 108th Legislature of Nebraska, second session, that the legislature congratulates Dr. Jeffrey Gold on outstanding public service to the University of Nebraska system and that a copy of this resolution be sent to Dr. Gold. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else? With that, please call the roll. Regent Thaveraju. Yes. Urban. Yes. Regent Schroeder. Yes. Regent Shear. Yes. Regent Stark. Yes. Regent Whites. Yes. Regent Wilmot. Yes. Regent Clare. Yes. Regent Kenny. Yes. Regent Schaefer. Yes. The motion passes. All right. Thank you. I would now like to ask President Kabori to guide us through the remaining items on the administrative agenda. Thank you, Chairman, Chairman Schaefer. They, sticking with uh, the uh, executive uh, committee items, um, item 11 C2, C2 seeks your approval of amendments to Board of Regents policy, Regent policy 5.3.1 to align university policy with <coughs> recent changes to federal regulations that will go into effect July 1 of 2024 regarding when transcripts may be withheld to encourage payment of outstanding balances. This item was reviewed by the executive committee and I recommend it to you for your approval. Okay. Is there a motion to approve item 11 C2? So moved. Any discussion? Roll call please. Regent Thaveraju. Yes. Regent Herbin. Yes. Regent Schroeder? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Whites? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, now moving to the academic affairs portion of the meeting. Item 11A1 seeks your approval to eliminate the Master of Arts in Mathematics in the College of Arts and Sciences at UNL. Now, first, I want to I want to be clear that this elimination is for the Master of Arts program only. 
there still exists a Master of Science in Mathematics at UNL, which has the same degree requirements. The Master of Science is the more popular of the two degree path and there are currently as there are currently no students in the Master of Arts program. So as we've talked about being more efficient and smarter, I think this continues and I appreciate the good work of the Provost Office, the Chief Academic Officers on this. And so this item was reviewed by the Academic Affairs Committee and I recommend it to you for your approval. Is there a motion to approve item 11A1? So move. Any discussion? Uh, Regent Shear. Well, I, I'm just would piggyback on uh, Chris's comments that I think this is something that we will see more and more of as we try to streamline and uh, remove duplication across the campuses in order to be able to not only save funds but also <clears throat> reinvest the, some funds into different directions that will improve the university system uh, system wide and uh, offer additional opportunities for students in other areas that we, know we at this point, cannot afford to pursue. But uh, uh, removing that duplication re relieves some of the financial pressure in, in moving into those directions. And so uh, I think this is just a foretaste of, of many to come where we will be uh, more strategic in our plans and, and offerings. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Regent Herbin. Yes. Regent Schroeder. Yes. Regent Devaraju. Yes. Regent Weitz. Yes. Regent Wilmot. Yes. Regent Clare. Yes. Regent Kenny. Yes. Regent Schaefer. Yes. Regent Shear. Yes. Regent Stark. Yes. Passes. Thank you. Uh, Regent Shear is right on point because the next two items will be very uh, similar in uh, nature. Um, Item 11A2 seeks your approval to eliminate the U.S. Legal Studies LLM in the College of Law at UNL. You know, since this program was established in the fall of 2014, there have been less than five students in the program. And so based on the lack of demand, the College of Law has determined that the investment required to continue the program is simply just not justified. The item was reviewed by the Academic Affairs Committee, and I recommend it to you for your approval. Is Okay, uh, Regent Clare's made a motion to approve a item 11A2. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Regent Schroeder. Yes. Regent Devaraju. Yes. Regent Herbin. Yes. Regent Wilmot. Yes. Regent Clare. Yes. Regent Kenny. Yes. Regent Schaefer. Yes. Regent Shear. Yes. Regent Stark. Yes. Regent Weitz. Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Item 11A3 seeks your approval to eliminate the Master of Science for Teachers in Mathematics in the College of Arts and Sciences at UNL. Again, two degree paths exist for a master's degree in teaching mathematics, a Master of Arts degree and a Master of Science degree. In this case, no students have completed the Master of Science degree since 2007. The Master of Arts degree in teaching mathematics is still available at UNL. Again, I thank the good work of the provost office, our chief academic officers, as we as we go through and think more smartly about um, these degree programs. This item was reviewed by the Academic Affairs Committee, and I recommend it to you for your approval. Is there a motion to approve item 11A3? So moved. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Regent Devaraju. Yes. Regent Herbin. Yes. Regent Schroeder. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Weitz? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Item 11A4 seeks your approval to establish a new undergraduate major in business analytics granted as a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration administered by the Department of Supply Chain Management and Analytics in the College of Business at UNL. The major in business analytics will train students to transform data into information and insights to help organizations make better decisions and achieve their strategic goals. This proposed major requires no new faculty or resources. It utilizes existing courses, builds upon the minor that has grown over the past five years. This item was reviewed by the Academic Affairs Committee 
and I recommend it to you for your approval. Okay. Is there a motion to approve item 11A4? I move it. it. All right. Any discussion? I would ask uh, Chancellor Bennett if he would uh, add, add some color to it. Uh, absolutely. First, I want to thank and congratulate the work of our Executive Vice Chancellor, Kathy Ankerson, who's been leading the efforts not only in the addition of this program, but the elimination or modification of the programs that were previously approved by the board. I think it's a good example of the university working to be in alignment with both the letter and spirit of what the board is asking us to do in terms of being good stewards of our resources. I would further add that many of our students are looking for these innovative, creative uh, degree opportunities, and this particular item certainly aligns us with what the needs of our students are and what the needs of employers in the business community, not only in the state of Nebraska, but around the region are asking us to do. So we, we feel really good about where we are. We feel like our students will be successful in the program, and we anxiously await the approval of the board of this item. Thank you, Chancellor. Regent Shear. Well, I just I think it's important to note that this is sort of an item that when we discussed earlier of a new process, a new uh, package to make available to our students, you know, just like you, know, you, you keep hearing that the, the jobs that uh, the person that's a ninth grader or a freshman in high school maybe even haven't been uh, developed yet by the time they graduate from college, well, colleges have to change as well. And there is a lot of need for the, the basics, but we have to also continue to modify ourselves to make us uh, really relevant in the educational process of students for the future. And this, I think, is an excellent example of trying to make the university system uh, staying relevant in the business community. We, it's, it, it really is important, and there should be more of these coming forward uh, as we move uh, in the future because, again, we have to learn to change and educate as society changes and technology changes in order to adapt and, and be relevant in, in the future as a university system. Regent Kenny? The reason I want to say is because... Um, President Kaborik said, you know, we, we're, we've got the foot, our foot on the pedal going as fast as we can, but we still have millions of dollars to cut. So it's a little bit of an oxymoron. We're adding classes, yet we've got, uh, that's why we think it's, I thought it was important to address on it. Oh, and that's why I kind of liked it wasn't adding any expenses. We're using what we have, uh, and we're magnifying that or increasing it. But it is on the pedal, but you're still staying within the things that we're trying to accomplish. Okay, anyone else? If not, please call the roll. Regent Thevaraju? Yes. Regent Herbin? Yes. Regent Schroeder? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Whites? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you, and I echo those good barks, and, and we can talk more about that when we get to the budget item about being very, very strategic and smart about uh, utilization of our resources going forward. Uh, moving on to item 1185, it seeks your approval to transition the graduate certificate in applied behavior analysis administered by the Department of Psychology in the College of Arts and Sciences at UNO. In response to changes made by the Applied Behavior and Analysis Board to require a master's degree for certification and licensing, UNO proposes to transition the current certificate program and focus on revising the current Master of Science in Applied Behavior Analysis to meet the new requirements. Students can continue to obtain certification as a registered behavior technician and students currently enrolled in the certificate program will be able to complete the program. When students are no longer enrolled, the certificate program will be eliminated. The item was reviewed by the Academic Affairs Committee, and I recommend it to you for your approval. Is there a motion to approve item 11A5? So move. Second. Any discussion? 
Please call the roll. Regent Herbin. Yes. Regent Schroeder. Yes. Regent Thevaraju. Yes. Regent Schaefer. Yes. Regent Shear. Yes. Regent Stark. Yes. Regent Whites. Yes. Regent Wilmot. Yes. Regent Clare. Yes. Regent Kenny. Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. And the last item for academic affairs, item 11A6, seeks your approval to establish a new Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences in the College of Pharmacy at University of Nebraska Medical Center. <clears throat> this program is intended for undergraduate students interested in a Doctor of Pharmacy degree, other health professional degrees, pharmaceutical sciences, and other graduate programs or in entry-level careers in the medical field, such as medical sales representatives, or pharmaceutical research technicians. Students participating in the program will complete degree prerequisites -requ at any two or four year institution before being admitted to UNMC to complete the program. At the end of their first year at UNMC, students are eligible to apply for early entry into the pharmacy doctoral program at UNMC. This program assists in the development of a pipeline program to help fulfill Nebraska's healthcare workforce needs. The item was reviewed by the Academic Affairs Committee and I recommend it to you for your approval. Is there a motion to approve item 11A6? Second. Any discussion? I was just very happy to see that this will also be offered on the Kearney campus and hopefully that will keep some of those people right. Okay, Chancellor. Yeah, thank you. Well, two points. One, uh, I just want to recognize and thank Dean Keith Olson and uh, Senior Vice Chancellor Dr. Deli Davies for the work in putting this together. There is a tremendous workforce demand signal uh, in retail pharmacy, uh, across the health professions, and in big pharma for individuals with a bachelor's degree uh, in this area. And uh, the, the work that has been done to create this program, I'm sure, uh, will meet many of the workforce needs in, in rural and in uh, urban uh, Nebraska. And, and thank you for saying that, Regent Wilmot. The uh, opportunity to offer this both in Kearney uh, and uh, in, on the Omaha campus is really exciting because there's a tremendous amount of uh, workforce demand uh, in, in rural Nebraska, and, uh, and this hopefully will continue to meet those needs. Uh, you know, we can spend a long time lamenting <clears throat> the shortages of healthcare professionals, but this is a very proactive step uh, in attempt to deal with it. And uh, as this is the last agenda item uh, under academic affairs, I might comment that the provost office, and particularly recognizing uh, Dr. Jackson and others, uh, has worked really hard in transitioning these programs through the <coughs> academic array process uh, outlined uh, several years ago. Uh, you've seen items of elimination, items of transition, items of combination of programs in almost every Board of Regents meeting uh, over the last several years. And as was mentioned, uh, this trend is going to continue as we continue to analyze uh, what our students need. Uh, and how to best provide it to them uh, in the highest value proposition uh, and at the same time uh, to make sure that we stay laser focused on access and affordability. So I'm deeply grateful for all of the work that the provost's office team have done and I thank you for that and I do uh, sincerely recommend that we approve the creation of the BSPS program. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I'd also like to commend uh, this change because it starts to show our ability to collaborate with our community college partners um, in ways that help our students um, get the things they need as effectively and efficiently and cost effectively as possible. And I think this creates a pathway for a number of students that might otherwise not seek a bachelor's degree. Next. Um, I think that students will really appreciate this degree. Um, any sort of early admission option is very popular with students because it takes out the uncertainty of, um, you know, the application process. It, it eases their worries a little bit. Um, also lets them, you know, get their degree in less years and uh, less tuition. 
Um, so, and, and also this degree would be a precursor degree for um, people going into the health professions. And, you know, as from personal experience as a pre-med student, uh, choice of undergraduate major is really important because, you know, God forbid you don't get into the program of your choice, you'd like to have a degree that um, is really versatile and, and you can use outside of just that path. So, Excellent. Anyone else? Not, please call the roll. Regent Schroeder? Yes. <clears throat> Regent Favaraju? Yes. Regent Urban? Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Whites? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to the business and finance portion of your agenda. Um, Mr. Chairman, with your support, I would ask that items 11B1 through 11B4, approval of the 2024-2025 Fund B University Program and Facilities Fees for UNK, UNL, UNL, UNMC, and UNO be considered together. Fund B fees represent the portion of the university program and facilities fees designated to pay debt services, staff salaries, faculty maintenance, or facility maintenance, and other related expenses. These fees are vetted each year by student government and help support important student programs such as student health, mental health services, campus recreation, student unions, and transportation services such as shuttles. As always, we are mindful about bringing forward any cost increases for our students. But I know our student leadership goes through a careful process to determine the appropriate fees for maintaining quality student services on our campuses. These relatively modest increases will help ensure that we continue to provide the services that our students expect and deserve. The proposed fees were reviewed by the Business and Finance Committee, and I recommend them for your approval. Unless there's an objection, we will vote on items 11B1 through 11B4 together. Is there a motion to approve items 11B1 through 11B4? All right, thank you. Is there any discussion? Uh, I'd just like to comment um, specific for the UPFF uh, Fund B for UNK. When you break it down, um, the itemized proposal shows a flat rate in all areas except for uh, our wellness center. And I'd just like to note that the wellness center at UNK is one of our largest student employers on campus, uh, that more students at UNK are involved through the wellness center than are in student organizations, actually. Uh, thank you, Vice Chancellor Holman, for that fact. Um, so whether through physical activity or through uh, intramural sports, um, uh, we have a lot of students engaged in the Wellness Center. And um, I believe a UPFF Fund B increase will allow our Wellness Center to better provide services to students. I believe it will contribute to the physical health of our student body. And I, will, I believe the increase will help uh, keep students employed, which can be a difficult challenge with a uh, raising minimum wage. Okay. Thank you. Regent Kenny. I believe all uh, chancellors are in support of this, of this raise. Okay. Anyone else? Um, similarly to UNK, UNL's um, increases really are going to favor student wellness, specifically mental health, and also supporting a livable wage for students to make as student workers. So I think that this increase is going to be a positive one. Great. Who else? Chancellor. Thank you, Chair. I want to support the uh, student regions, what they said. Uh, the request from UNO really actually helped to fund some student worker that serve, you know, in the front desk. And student helping student is really the spirit of Nebraska. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, please call the roll. Regent Devaraju. Yes. Regent Herbin. Yes. Regent Schroeder. Yes. Regent Shear. Yes. Regent Stark. Yes. Regent Whites. Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, with your approval, I would ask that items 11B5 and 11B6, approval of the 2024-2025 operating budgets for the University of Nebraska and the Nebraska College of Technical Agriculture be considered together. And um, if I might, I would like to take a few minutes um, to talk about the budget and go through some of the specifics. First of all, I, I, I want us to say a lot of thank you. A thank you to this board. Thank you to our chancellors, to our leadership teams, to our chief business officers. What we are proposing you to today um, is the culmination of about two years of planning and work and, and conversations and debate and, and disagreements and, and uh, mediation and collaboration. Um, and it takes a lot of work. It takes some, um, uh, you know, sometimes uncomfortable conversations. But, um, you know, I think, um, you know, no budget is perfect. And uh, I wouldn't expect all of us to agree on every single element that we are proposing. But at the end of the day, I feel good about the proposal in front of you. I think it's responsible and it puts us in a strong position for the year ahead. Most importantly, it keeps tuition affordable for our students. It includes some investments, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes, that, that I'm excited about. And, you know, really important to me, it gives Dr. Gold a clean slate as he transitioned into the new role so that he can develop his priorities without a structural deficit hanging over his head when he gets into the seat on July 1. So let's just go over a few of the elements uh, in, a, in a bit more detail. First and foremost, you expect us to deliver a balanced budget, and we are doing that today. This has been, like I said, one of my highest priorities as interim president, and I'm pleased that uh, we have been able to sharpen our pencils, come to uh, some agreement, and bring what you bring to you what I think is a prudent path forward. You know, three primary strategies uh, were used to eliminate the structural shortfall over this biennium, and I emphasize over this biennium because, you know, we have a lot of work in front of us to do, as we talked about. Otherwise, we will be in the same exact position year after year from now, but we'll talk about that more later. You know, to address, um, you know, the issue, at the end of the day, um, you know, revenues are muted, and we've been talking about that for quite some time and expenses are rising higher than, than they have historically. And that has left us with about a, a forecast where expenses are going to be roughly $17 million more than the projected revenues that we anticipate get, to get from the state legislature and, and the tuition we intend to bring in from our students. Now we intend to manage that $17 million in, in two primary ways. First, um, it will take a lot of work, and I, I thank my chancellor colleagues for this, but we intend to make $11 million in permanent spending cuts over the next year, which will be shared across all the campuses, including the office of the president. Now, cuts are never easy. They always look reasonable on paper until you have to sit across the table, which I've had to do many times, and look a really important employee in the, in the face and tell them they no longer have a job because we just cannot afford it. But I think at the end of the day, while it will be challenging, I think we all agree that this is a manageable amount and the chancellors are willing to roll up their sleeves, work through their shared governance processes, and find the right solutions in terms of our spending for next year. We will also address $6 million of that by not allocating funds for inflation for our, for our departments. So in other words, just like every Nebraskan, just like as you go to the gas pump and, and the price of gasoline goes up or you go to the grocery store and, and the price of your groceries are getting higher, you know, we are not going to, you don't run to your employer typically and ask for a raise to cover that. You, you make priorities and your spending decisions and that's what we're going to ask, just like every Nebraska family for our, our campuses and our deans and our colleges to do. Now, I understand that's still, still a cut. It's still going to be difficult, but I know we are up to the challenge to do that, and it's really going to make uh, allow us to keep um, tuition uh, that much more affordable. Which brings me to, finally, a tuition increases, and, and we are proposing a tuition increase. It equates to an inflationary contribution for our students for the value of their education. And, and I want to say a couple words about tuition. You know, 
most of you have heard my story, my personal background. I'm a first generation student. Um, uh, I got through school on Pell Grant and, and, and loans. So uh, I understand what it's like to sit around the dinner table, look at colleges, you see the price of colleges, and consider whether that's an investment that your family can take. Uh, I know that's a conversation that many of our Nebraska families are having today. And so I take, and I know our chancellors, and I know the board, we take any tuition increase proposal very, very seriously um, when we consider this. <clears throat> and that's been reinforced to me as I've gone through, as I visited a number of high schools over the last six months. Uh, as I told you, I, I, I visit with a number of students, not just, not just presidential scholars. And, you know, one of the first questions I asked them are, what are your concerns, what are your questions about when you think about going to college, and and no matter where whether I'm in a in a rural school, in an urban school, in a public school or a private school, the number one question I always get is, can I afford to go to college? So I know this question is front and center on our students, on our families, um, considering not only going to university but college in general. So we don't bring any tuition increase to you lightly. Uh, we have thought about this very, very carefully. But the fact is we have big goals for academic excellence for this institution. And I'm not going to repeat those because those have been, we've talked about those quite extensively over the last um, year or so. And I think it's fair for all of us, the university, the state, and our students to, to chip in to help us get where we want to go. And I think our students recognize quality does come with a cost. And there are contributions help support our great faculty and the educational experience they get. I think at the end of the day, I hope that they see that the return on the investment of the value of their degree from the University of Nebraska is second to none compared to anybody across the country. And so from a dollars and cents standpoint, we are proposing an inflationary tuition increase. It essentially amounts to if you pay the full sticker price um, and you take a 15 credit hour load, it amounts to about $135 a semester at the UNL campus, $120 a semester at, at for a student at UNO, and about $105 um, for a UNK student. Now I know that's, that's real money. Um, but there's a couple of things that give me some, some, some relief. Number one, I know most of our, a majority of our students receive some type of financial aid. So hopefully most of these students will not be paying those full sticker prices. And really important to me, there will be no impact on our Nebraska Promise students. Those students coming from families where their family makes less than $65,000 or above. We are making a commitment in the budget to increase the Nebraska Promise budget to make sure that we will be able to cover that cost for any of our, our most needy students. And so I think that partnership between the university finding more efficiencies, between the state, I want to thank the governor and the legislature for their support, and the students for their contribution are going to continue to put us on a pathway forward that's going to put us in a very, very strong position. It's actually going to allow us to provide what's most exciting to me is to pivot our conversation from spending reduction and cuts to investments. And I look at my good friend, Regent Claire, because I know he's really excited about investments, and as I am as well, because we are, there are so many good things going on at this institution, and, and we are going to start investing in them. And first and foremost, um, I'm excited about the proposal to put one and a half million dollars in the budget to grow the Presidential Scholars Program. You know, when I go to schools and tell students about this program to them, you know, the first thing I ask, they ask is, you know, I didn't get a 36, I got a 34 or a 32, so how quickly can you expand the program? And so our goal is to make sure all of our young people have an opportunity for, to shine. And so by expanding the program next year with this $1.5 million, we're going to continue to incentivize those perfect 36s. If you get a 36, you're going to automatically qualify. But we do want to have an application process for the next tier of students, those 32s, 33s, 34s, who are just amazing, amazing young people, but maybe missed a couple of science questions on the ACT. So it will be a highly, highly competitive process, but it will allow us, to, the one and a half million will allow us to establish an initial 50 student cohort of presidential scholars for every Nebraska kid, corner to corner of this state. 
And we're really looking forward to going out this fall with your support of promoting the program um, statewide um, across every corner of our state. So we're really excited about that potential pro proposal in the budget. We're really excited about, and again, I want to just thank the legislature and Governor Pillen. They are providing $15 million of annual recurring support to get the Christensen Rural Health Complex staffed and operating. So as I said, I, I drove by that building coming out of the ground. But a building is a building. What really makes a program are the faculty, the students, and the staff in that building. And that's what this $15 million investment will do. I know Dr. Gold, uh, Dr. Bicic, and the UNMC and UNK teams are, are already heavily recruiting you know, the next round of great faculty and staff that are going to support rural health force across Nebraska. So I can't say how much we are appreciative um, of the legislature, Gov uh, Governor Pillen, and really going back to um, um, Appropriation Chair John Stinner, who really spearheaded all this for their support. That is a significant, significant uh, investment in this year's budget. And finally, it was really important for us to, you know, we have big goals around the AAU, around making UNO the best metropolitan university in the country, and about making sure Kearney is reconnecting with rural Nebraska and maintaining a world-class medical center. And I know Dr. Gold has uh -huh. big ideas on that. Big ideas require resources, so uh, I'm glad we were able to put some funding, $1.5 million, <coughs> into the budget so that on day one, Dr. Gold can start talking about, thinking about what those priorities, priorities might be <clears throat> and that he has a little bit of funding to start making, taking action. So we're excited about the investments in the budget. I would end by saying that all of these discussions we've had with all of you, the board, over the past couple of years about the headwinds facing higher education are still before us. So while I feel really good about the budget, uh, we're putting before you today. It's going to put us in a strong position going forward. You know, we still need to continue to have dialogue and conversation and debate about the future. Higher education is changing quickly, as we just already kind of talked about with some of the program changes we're doing. But it's really important that we stay on offense. Um, we want to stay ahead of the curve. We don't want to be like some of our colleagues across the country. Uh, I won't name them that are having some very significant financial issues and, and are really been caught flat-footed. And, and that's, a, that's a huge um, shout-out to this board. I mean, we've been talking about this for two years now. You've been proactive, um, and, and that's really, really good. And, and I'm really pleased about our planning and, <clears throat> and where, we're, where we're headed. But that means, also means we, we have to be willing to challenge the status quo. And we're going to have to have conversations that make us uncomfortable. But it will be a transparent process, and we will find a way that makes sense for all Nebraska. And I'm convinced that the only way we're going to be able to get to the next level of excellence and competitiveness is finding those, some of those resources within. But I already said this. As a lifelong Nebraskan, I know we're not afraid of a challenge. I know we're competitive. And so I'm optimistic that we are going to be successful and we're up to the task. So. We have all the talent potential in this room and across our great institution to get to where we want to go. So I'm excited to keep this conversation going with the board and all Nebraskans. But for today, we are pleased with the um, responsible budget that we are putting before you. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I recommend the proposed budgets for both NCTA and the University to, to the board for your approval. Okay, unless there's an objection, we will vote on items 11B5 and 11B6 together. Oh, is, is there any objection to combining the two? Okay, so if, that's the, if there's no objection, then I would entertain a motion to approve items 11B5 and 11B6. Okay, now then, as far as discussion. Regent Wilmot? Um, I will be voting no, and my reasoning will be um, I don't support that much of a tuition increase, and I, I want to thank President Kaborik 
He has been extremely patient in listening to me and my reasonings and my questions, and I probably took more time than any other mm -hmm. board member, but I just appreciate it, and also the fact that he could accept the fact that we don't all see alike. Uh, to me, the families have already chipped in because, you know, they're paying the taxes and things that we turn to the legislature and everybody for. And then when we ask those students from those families to chip in again, I feel like that's somewhat of a double hit. And so that's something that I would have maybe been able to support at a little lower raise, but uh, not the 3.5% will be my reasoning for many other things in the budget I'm very thrilled about and support. Okay. Regent Clair? Well, I'll be voting yes. <laughs> Um, I think I'll, I'll be voting yes for for uh, for three reasons. One, I think it's very responsible. Two, I think it gives Jeff a um, excuse me, president elect, soon to be president, um, gold. Uh, it gives him um, what's been referred to as a clean slate for some things. And then finally, I think that uh, the tuition increase, I believe, is is affordable and predictable. So I think this is a, a very responsible budget, as I, as I said. I also want to acknowledge the great support and uh, uh, participation and, and partnership that we've got with the state legislature. And, and I know there's been discussions that, oh, gosh, all you got to do is ask the legislature to kick in more money. Well, if you look at their budget, the appropriation that the legislature makes illustrates a huge commitment to higher education. And, and so... I thank the legislature for their investment and their their uh, their partnership that we have with them. Um, but this is this is going to enable us to have a balanced budget, and will enable us to you know move forward and address some of the issues I'm going to talk about in a second. We are not kicking the can. We recognize these budget challenges, as Chris alluded to, um, about a year and a half ago, I believe, um, and. We dealt with it. We could have stuck our head in the sand, but instead we dealt with it. And 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 when you you know this the, the challenges that we're that we had and are and and have to continue to address are not unique to just the University of Nebraska. When you consider the fact there's a million fewer students in higher education right now than there was pre-COVID, you know the competition for students is fierce. The um, the challenges are real, and and I'm really proud of the fact that 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 we've dealt with it well, as Chris said as well. Uh, several of our other campuses, or several of the other institutions across the country, are are, are having some very significant significant issues right now. And so um, we we took on this challenge, and this is about this this budget. I think, in addition to to providing a balanced budget, it also gives us the opportunity to stay on offense. Um, if we're serious about getting into the AAU, then our camp this this budget will make our campuses even better. Um, and I think talk you know if you continue to talk about cuts, 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 that's not making us better. Instead we need to be talking about investments. And this budget does that. So you talk about some of the investments that we're making, the presidential scholars, and and again, what Chris did this year with the presidential scholars is is amazing, and um, going out and establishing um, relationships with counselors across the state, and I believe several of those counselors contacted you about students that might be interested in going to the university. And he showed a little love, and what happens? Those kids are coming here. And so making an additional investment with this budget into uh, <clears throat> not only the presidential scholarship, but also other scholarship opportunities for those kids that, that have maybe a 33 or a 34 who are outstanding students. Uh, but but like, like was mentioned, perhaps missed a question on science or missed a question in math, that doesn't mean that they don't deserve consideration for a higher scholarship. So I'm going to challenge our, our campuses to take a, a, a page out of the <coughs> Coach Rule and his staff and some of, several of our other coaches down uh, that, that get out and meet with these 
counselors. Get out and meet with these with these uh, um, principals and the guidance folks within the campuses uh, around high schools all across the state of Nebraska, as well as as, as well as other other uh, states and meet with these kids and attract these kids and tell these kids that we want them here. We can provide a great education, but we have to get out and talk to them. The landscape has changed and we need to, we need to be in every school. We need to be the first one that that student thinks about. We need to be the school that, that the kids, you know, the kids are saying, gosh, I wish I could get into the University of Nebraska. Um, <laughs> That's what I want. That's the aspirational goal that I've got for this for this campus. And so I think this 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 uh, um, this budget enables us. And it's long overdue. Honestly, um, uh, we have to take action now. And and I think this this program does it. And and or this this budget does it. And we will we will attract more five star students to come to the University of Nebraska. I also think the other investment that I think is important in this. Is is again, we can we can we can continue to be, we can continue status quo, or we can invest in programs that are going to elevate the University of Nebraska and the and I mean the entire system, elevate us and and uh, enhance our our offerings and and put us in a position for readmission back into the AAU. Um, that is the, in my opinion, that's the next level of excellence, and we need to be pushing forward with that. And we're going to have to make some tough decisions, as, as has been discussed. But if we have our eyes wide open about this, we can we can gain readmission. And so, keeping your foot on the accelerator, in my opinion, is continuing to to look at things not only about programs that we can we can perhaps make more efficient, enhance our offerings, deal with some of the issues that that my colleague Regent Shear talked about where these kids they're studying right now and the programs the the jobs that they're going to be taking after they get done with with their education aren't even invented yet um, but we're preparing them with that broad-based education and and narrowing in the focus on some of the other elements of the education so that they are prepared and, th and they are getting um, opportunities and we're we've got those kids that are not that will be able to get jobs after they get done um, so the the invest the uh, the budget is responsible and it provides some some opportunities in terms of investments. Gives uh, President Gold a, a a a clean slate, so to speak. And finally, on the tuition issue, you know, we had Amy and I had f uh, uh, five kids go through college, and it is it is a, an expensive proposition, um, and um, it, it's a it. It's a challenge for for all families. Higher education is expensive, and the costs are real. Uh, we don't take uh, tuition increases on this board lightly. All of us recognize that it is a, it is an expensive proposition, um, but at the same time, excellence does have a price tag, and and. This proposal, in my opinion, strikes that right balance. Inflationary increases is fair, an, an inflationary increase is fair and predictable, and it's, go it's going to enhance an otherwise outstanding education that the students are getting right now. And I think, again, we'll prepare them for their jobs and their opportunities, whatever they're going to do post-graduation. This education at the University of Nebraska is going to prepare them for those challenges. Uh, so I am a very strong yes on this, and I want to, again, acknowledge the great work that Chris Kaborik did, not only in terms of the <clears throat> finance side and in, in, in putting this budget together, but also his work with the presidential, presidential scholarship as well as the uh, his work as the interim uh, uh, president for our university. We are better than we were when he took over. And um, and I think this budget will make us better after that than we are right now. And so um, I I wholeheartedly support this this proposal. Okay, Thanks. Regent Stark. Um, <clears throat> you have me beat. I only have 17 semesters of tuition. For my family. I agree with some, and I I understand where Kathy's coming from. Um, I did something, and I really deeply appreciate it, because the three chancellors, I asked you to give me a page and a half summary on this tuition, and you did it, and you gave me some great information. 
Uh, what I found um, from Chancellor Bennett is that we're the lowest tuition in the Big Ten, second lowest next to Purdue. Second, um, our increase looks like it's going to be the lowest in tuition in the Big Ten from what I can see so far. Um, Dr. Lee and her background is on the Fed. Um, inflation is, in the last four years has been 21%. Our tuition increase has been 7%. It's been triple. Our health insurance has gone up 10%. Our, our energy has gone up. We're falling way, way behind. And the students that I talk to, and, and I know that um, at, at, at Kearney, 28% of your students are minority students. And so we've got a technology at the medical center. It's doubling every sec, ten, seven years. Dr. Gold, am I correct? I mean, it's, it's going. So to offer these classes in AI and um, precision agriculture and precision medicine, it's going to require new courses. This is not for new courses. This is just to try to balance the budget to cut less. So I appreciate your information. I didn't realize the differences in tuition as your budget for each of the campuses. There's a lot of uniqueness that plays into it, and it puts an extra burden on some of you that have higher tuition, although like at, at UNO, you have a very large population of Nebraska Promise students and stuff. So uh, a majority of those students that we have uh, will not have an increase, as, as Chris <clears throat> has pointed out. So I'm a big supporter of this. I appreciate the information that you provided me. It's been very helpful. Um, so with that, I, I will be voting yes. Thank you. Regent Shear. Go ahead, Barb. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Regent Whites. Yes. Um, first of all, just for those of you who don't know me, um, I was a faculty at UNO for 18 to 20 years. And I come from that faculty perspective in some respects, so you should, you know, understand that. Um, the, th the thing I, um, I'm most encouraged about, and I'm glad we're talking about the unicameral, and I know that's a critical piece of our uh, funding for this university. And I, th I think it's, it's incumbent upon us to take time to one-on-one -on -one with our senators. And just as we're challenging us to talk to people one-on-one -on -one, um, in our daily lives, in our work, and, and at opportunities like this, I also think that we need to take a serious time for us to sit down and really help our senators understand what flexibility and what incredible change is coming in higher education and relate it to their concern about workforce challenge in this state. And I'm concerned that, um, of course, no one wants to raise tuition. I, I hate the idea, but I also understand that it, it is an investment. And, and when we look at the outcomes of students that graduate 20 years from now, their incomes are much higher than students that never went beyond high school. And understanding that is one thing, but we understand that a lot of our our constituents do not understand that higher education has been getting a lot of hits in the national press. And I think it's very important for us as educators. I mean, not all of us are actively educators, but I think we all are in so many ways in our role as public officials to educate the people uh, of what exactly the university's role is in this state and how it impacts um, our workforce, how it impacts how possible new companies looking for a place to make a home, how they look at what the possibilities are here. And so it brings me to my other favorite word, which is collaboration. And I think um, we really have to start taking this as seriously as possible to bring in more of collaborating partners. We're seeing that happening in public-private partnerships in various parts of our university system. Some people have more access to that than others, but I think we need to educate ourselves on how we can begin to look at more of those in arenas that we've not seen them in before. And the second thing I think is our collaboration with the uh, NU Foundation and um, creating um, a, a real sense for them of the possibilities and the future 
with, and they're in the midst of a huge campaign right now, and I'm really excited to be a part of it because they're doing really well, which tells me that people in Nebraska value education. They care about it. They want to invest in it. Sometimes they don't know exactly how to do that. And that's our job, is to be as uh, transparent as we can about how we make change in this state and how we help people move in their social mobility. I hear Dr. Lee talk about that quite frequently. And the budget is a critical factor in this. And we, I heard an incredible presentation um, at our uh, UNO campaign committee by our vice chancellor of uh, academics, Dr. Who, I never say her name right, but I'm trying hard, um, about we, we're becoming well known in this country for a number of amazing programs that we've developed over these last years under the leadership that we've had. And people are starting to know that we have some amazing things happening here and they're wanting to take our faculty. And because we pay our faculty um, at significantly lower levels, we do have a lower cost of living, so that helps a little bit. But we have to understand that if we don't continue to think about how we support our faculty and their, and their presence and their research as a university, that we're going to have our faculty picked off. They're getting offers. We saw, I, you can say better than I can, but, but we saw uh, 17 faculty who've received offers that more than double the faculty they're getting from us, the money that they're getting from us. We aren't going to keep our outstanding faculty if we continue to sort of treat them like <clears throat> the faculty that uh, unknown other universities have or that's average or we want to be the best and to be the best you've got to have the best people doing the teaching doing the administering and we've been working on that and it's exciting but it doesn't do it by itself and the administration at Varner Hall can't do this all by themselves the unicameral is our outreach to our constituents in many ways. And if we spend more time with them, if we really meet face to face, because I do think that's important. I think Chris, Chris's work has pointed that out very clearly. We really need to help Nebraskans understand why this university is critical to the future of the economy of this state. And um, this budget, I know I hate three and a half percent, but I think it's at this point, we have to do it. We have to keep paying the faculty at least what we're paying them now. We should be paying them a lot more because they are incredible. And I would love for you to sometime hear this presentation of who's going after our faculty. It's a big time universities. And we don't want to lose them. We don't want to lose any of all of us. So we have really got to face the uncomfortable conversations that you're talking about. We have got to make decisions that are difficult. And what we have to do with that, though, is give the context, help people understand why it is we need to do this. What's in the future for us? We can't be short-sighted and say, well, in the next two years, we want to do this. We've got to be talking about 10, 20 years from now in this state, or there won't be people there won't be big companies in this state because they can go to other universities, other states who are more favorable in terms of what they pay their faculty, what budgets they have from whoever their philanthropy community is. And we have an amazing philanthropy community, and we need to use that as well. So I am going to vote yes on this because I think it's critical for us going forward, but we have to do better. And we've got to ask for more. And the only way we can ask for more is to prove to them why we need more and why that's essential to all of our well-being across all the state, Beaver City. We've got to get rid of the lion cubs wandering around in Beaver City. You know, where was that vet group that was here? Anyway, um, I, j I want to thank you for the hard work it is to try and get this in times of difficult money issues, get this done. But I really, I think we, we, I as a regent, am committed to finding new sources of revenue, new ways. I mean, I've already told everybody about my idea about the columbarium under 
Memorial Field. So I won't talk about that. But I think we have to get to some really critical new revenue sources. And we've got to do it now. We can't sort of just deal with the crisis. We've got to be ahead of it. And I think that's what you've all been saying. So um, if you want to ask me about that bar column barium idea, I'm, I'll stay for a little while afterwards. So uh, thank you. I'm voting yes on this and hoping to challenge you to look for much more next year. Okay. Thank you. Regent Shear. Uh, thank you. Um, I wasn't necessarily going to say anything because we burn a lot of time, but everybody else has put their two cents worth. So I will as well. And, you know, I, I look at things perhaps somewhat differently than a lot of different people. But when we look at tuition, tuition doesn't fund the university. It funds a very small part of the total university. And when we ask the student, or the student and their families, to participate in part of that increase, it may not be fair, Kathy, but that's life. They are receiving the benefit. It's not fair if you want to go down as far as you want because ultimately, yes, the legislature provides those funds, but it's the population. It's the people in Nebraska that provide the dollars. And we're asking them to provide those dollars, and maybe that's not fair either. But they're doing their part to help the increase with the, the university system. And I do think it's only applicable that the students and their families help participate in those additional funds because they're going to receive the direct benefit. Joe Blow doesn't receive the direct benefit other than having a higher educated population. He maybe has a better doctor to go visit. He maybe has a better accountant. He maybe has a better dentist or attorney. That's what we're doing. We're producing the better people for the population of the state of Nebraska. Three, three and a half percent, I don't think is an unreasonable request for those people that are receiving the ultimate benefit of this university to help in the participation. You know, it's, it's, it's new math. We, we belong to the Big Ten. There's 18 of us, but it's the Big Ten. But if you look... At those. Maybe if they had taken a, more of a math class, they could have figured that out. Well, I'm, not, I'm, I'm <laughs> doing a little lecture here, Dan. So. But as Jack had stated, Purdue is the lowest, barely behind, below the university. But what people don't realize, Purdue has not had a rate increase for 13 years. For God's sakes, think how high they were 13 years ago. And we're still the only one that's above them. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that it's like, oh, gosh, you know, it's, well, I'm showing my age here, but it's the Paul Harvey effect. It's the rest of the story, you know. Um, you know, we can make things about anything that we want, but it really comes down to what are we providing? Is it beneficial? And is it worthwhile? And it most certainly is. You know, life's not fair, but we still have to move forward. And we've got a trajectory. And, and by the way, I, I do want to make note that we talked about the University of and Lincoln and their de athletic department and UNO and UNK, but, you know, there's only one athletic department that was undefeated last year, and that's the labs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, you know, we're really on an upward bound package. But, you know, in seriousness, you know, no one likes to raise prices for anything. But we're stewards of money. And I, I tell you, you know, the, the legislature is a, a powerful organization and they are very important people. And they're purveyors. And the appropriations, I think it, any of you that have done any looking at that 
know that the Nebraska legislature historically, not just the last year or two, but for decades, has provided the university system at a higher rate than probably any other university in the Big Ten as a percentage of our income. And they, and, but it's not the legislature, it's the population of the, of the state of Nebraska. They direct it to us, but it's the population of Nebraska that has been supporting our university so well for decades and decades. It's not new to them. And I do appreciate it. I've been there. And the other thing that a lot of people say, well, just go to the legislature, you get more money. They have everybody and their dog asking for more money. And not that a lot of those requests are not as, as important as, as probably ours. And that's where the tread really meets the, the turf, is because they have to make the ultimate decision where to utilize those that give them the best bang for their buck. And I've I got to believe that the university system is that. You know, Tim made the comment, or maybe it was Chris, that you know we've been looking at this 18 months. Well, guess what? I've been on this board for 18 months. What a hell of a time to join it! You know, <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be a great deal. And I walk in, it's well, we're broke and we got to do stuff. <laughs> Welcome to my world, you know. But we've taken care of it. You know, we're different than a lot of organizations. We didn't pass the buck. We took the time to find a, a, re, a relevant way to reduce our expenditures, yet being able to improve our offerings and the value of our education. That's work. That was work on the administration part. That was work on the part of the, of the regents. That's our job. That's their job. But we've done it very well. We've done, it, we've done it better than most anyone, any other institution in the United States, bar none. And I think we should reflect upon that. This isn't a day of, my God, you know, what are we going to do? This is, you know, my God, look what we've done. We're moving forward. We're not removing, I mean, <clears throat> again, not naming names, but I read this week that one of those institutions that we're talking about that really got caught flat-footed have a buyout for their staff. They have to reduce not only faculty, but all of their staff by over 15%. And they've given them about 60 days notice. Either take it, if not, you're going to be terminated. We haven't had to do that. We've adjusted. But what we've adjusted, we've made permanent reductions and permanent changes so that it just doesn't happen again and again and again. We've got a bright future. We'll have a lot better future than most universities in the United States because we've taken those steps and we've got a vision of where we want to go. And we've got a, a president-elect in Dr. Gold that shares that vision and will know how to get us there. I've got the ultimate confidence in his ability to lead us there. But it starts with everybody starting to pay a little bit of that share. And I would ask you to reconsider because I think this is a legitimate request for those that are receiving the benefit of this education to help pay a little bit of that additional cost that we're going to see. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Regent Kinney. <clears throat> First, I have to apologize. Uh, having surgery last week and then my, my computer went down. I don't know what updated part of the budget is since I met a week ago. I would say that uh, um, Purdue is locked into whatever in a dollar that comes in. And you can tell me the federal number of dollars come in for a student. We're like 20% of our, our, our students get uh, from federal dollars. So which gets more, Northwestern or Nebraska, for our credit? If I'm understanding your question correctly, um, uh, after financial aid, University of Nebraska students are paying 
far less of their cost of their education than a student at Northwestern, most likely. So, I mean, the, to, to me, the, the three and a half doesn't make, make, make me feel bad. Um, what makes me feel bad is that we also voted today eliminating a class that had four students in it. That isn't how we ought to be operating. That should have been taken care of a long time ago. And we did it. We've done it the last uh, few uh, meetings and, and uh, reason here just to make you feel better. Since I've been on here, we've got $100 million. So uh, we've done it and done it, and we're still going. Um, I don't know exactly if I'm voting yes or abstaining, but uh, the three, th only the three-and-a-half part of it doesn't scare me because I think that uh, uh, if you make $65,000 or less, um, you're, you go to university for free, right? So what are we looking at? So uh, part of that above, above that gets paid uh, with assistance from the federal government. So <coughs> just uh, somewhat concerned we're not quite there yet. Okay, any other comments? Uh, chancellors? Well, thank you. Uh, <coughs> and uh, just a couple. First, I want to extend thanks to uh, Chris Kaborik, mm -hmm. our chief business officers, and the team here in Varner. You know, I'm sure the regents understand this, but for the benefit of others, uh, this is not something that happens in a matter of days or weeks, but this is a very thoughtful, ongoing process, and it has been a uh, work in progress for several years to get to this point. And when I say this point, we talk about, quote, the clean slate uh, for me to assume the presidency of this great university system. Uh, that's a historic moment, and it's truly a moment of celebration because this is the 11th budget cycle that I've actively participated in since I joined the team here uh, back in the winter of 2014. And to have a budget that is the structural recurring components of the budget are truly balanced, not just across the system but on the campuses, not only creates a platform for the president to uh, be more proactive and invest in excellence, but also sends a very clear message to the legislature and to the governor that we're not digging out of a budgetary hole, but that we have done what we need to do. And with all respect to uh, Regent Kinney, over my uh, you know years here, we've taken out a lot more than $100 million uh, from the budget. And by the way, the overwhelming majority of that did not come out of the academic mission. Uh, our research mission, et cetera, we were able to do that through predominantly administrative reduction and uh, protecting that led by the leadership here in Varner Hall, statistically. Uh, the other point I would make is that as each of us in, sitting on this table and as I will in <coughs> my future role interact with the private philanthropic community, they too want to know that we have a structurally balanced budget and that we are asking them to join us and invest in excellence and not dig out of difficult recurring uh, financial uh, challenges. And so this sets that stage uh, as well. And as I said, uh, and if you heard many times, uh, we not only need to compete for reentry into the AAU, but we need to win that competition. And indeed, coming at this uh, with a structurally sound budget, coming at it with an opportunity to invest in excellence, uh, is going is relatively precedent setting among the uh, seventy some odd institutions that are currently the members of the AAU. I would bet you, if you were to do a survey, there are fairly severe budgetary challenges even among the most elite universities uh, in our nation. And I think that that's going to be uh, an important. Uh, consideration. You know, again, those of you that know me knew that I grew up in the inner city of New York. You know that it were not for scholarships and work study and student loans. I never would have been able to have a college degree, let alone go to med school and do all the things that I've achieved. And believe me, having paid off those student loans for decades and having had to work uh, through med school and having had to work through college, I really understand what it means to change tuition and to change the out-of-pocket expenses. Uh, but I also know what it costs to buy a dozen eggs today, and I also know what it costs to put gas in your car. Uh, and you have to invest in these things. 
I think the really good news and the historic news for every Nebraskan and the parent of every child that is currently here and will be in the future uh, is that we are investing in their future. We, we don't, you're not investing, uh, the return on that investment, the return of this great university system is in the future of our state. And you don't measure that on a quarter by quarter or year by year basis. You measure that over decades to come. And our university has never been more critical to the economic future and to the quality of life uh, in the state of Nebraska than it is today. And then finally, uh, I would say the, the opposite of growth, which is what we must do, both in quantity and quality of what we deliver, is not maintaining the status quo. Unfortunately, the opposite of growth is non-sustainability. And we have to not only grow in volume of what we deliver, think enrollment, research grants, contracts, partnerships, philanthropy, uh, et cetera, but we have to address the serious issues of what are we going to look like in the future. And coming back to Chris's comments, this gives us a window of opportunity to do that, but do it in a way that we're not being pressured by lack of structural balance of the budget. So it is a unique moment in time uh, for us to move forward. And with my fellow chancellors and the members of our great Board of Regents, I, I think we're up for that challenge. So thank you for the opportunity to make some comments. Chancellor Lee. Thank you, Chair. Um, first and foremost, I would like to say I'm tremendously grateful for the Board of Regents and our interim president, Kubarik. We spent mm -hmm. a lot of time debating on the budget, and I think it's a very healthy exercise. We don't have to agree, because when it comes to money, it sometimes is a personal thing. So more than three years ago, when I first answered the call of University of Nebraska to come serve UNO, I wholeheartedly embraced UNO's mission and commitment to really provide what we call accessible and affordable education, quality education. So I spent a lot of nights thinking about it and, you know, by training, I'm a finance professor, I love looking at the numbers and data is important and participating in a lot of things and educating future president with uh, ask you. I asked myself, I as a parent who also pay tuition and fees for my daughter to go to school, every time when university said we need to increase tuition and fee, it's a, it's a tough thing to swallow. But that being said, let me put my hat on as a financial analyst and also as a chancellor. When time that we decide we want to sustain an operation for university, it is an ongoing concern. We have to think for the future to sustain university. When inflation is going forward and we skip a year or fail not to do anything to make up for it, we become facing a compound effect. Our faculty, our staff, they are also part of the labor workforce. We cannot continue to cut into compensating them equitably. We have to consider growing this university, not just by balancing budget, but also by vision. We have to be financially smart to understand our responsibility to sustain a university. Recently, there is a very well published, uh, published data coming out from College Board, which is a national um, organization that pay a lot of attention to high ed pricing. According to College Board report, there is a wide variation in tuition levels among states. The average 2023 to 24 tuition and fees at public four-year institution for five-year percentage changes in inflation-adjusted in-state tuition and fees Nebraska show a negative 10% in tuition and fees increase. It's a negative 10%. Second, I also ask myself, okay, well, don't just talk about why you need an increase. Think about how do you compare with your peers. Our peers are a little different from, from the Big Ten. You know, currently stand at an annual tuition and fees, $8,370. We are the second lowest among our peers compared to University of North Carolina, Charlotte. North Carolina as a state rank 
20 out of 36 from state support. And Nebraska ranked 23rd in state support. So in the upper half, we're in the lower half. And also, when you think about um, why we are second lowest, part of it, you know, like what uh, Regent Shea said, educating a professional is not only from tuition and fees. We have state support. We also have donor support. And I'm very proud that you know many of our students actually attend college free. They include first respondents and the family. They include a big majority of our students in Nebraska primus. This system has done tremendous amount of work to ensure this state will continue to thrive. So let's talk about national data. A student receive a bachelor degree compared to a student that have a high school diploma over the lifetime that earn over more than $1.2 million. So that is an investment. And higher education still remain one of the highest ROI. And I remain faithful to the statement that education is one of the rare commodity. Once you get it, you seldom uh, depreciate that commodity. You will continue to appreciate. So I think University of Nebraska, along with you and all, we think we debate ourselves for the longest and hardest time. We need to think harder about the future, not only about sustaining the, the budget or whatever, but really to think through how to educate our young student. Every time I look at our student region, I said we totally have to think what is the responsible way going forward. And um, the last thing, the Purdue magic. 13 years in making, and a lot of people know that. The differential between the in-state Purdue student versus the out-of-state you know, student, it's three times. So Purdue under Mitch Daniel, which greatly loved and respected as a modern president in, in the United States, he has done a lot of magical moments, including maximizing out-of-state tuition or maximizing out-of-state student attendance. That's how they sustain the budget. So with that, thank you for listening. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if time allows, I'd like to make just maybe sure. very brief comments. Uh, first, Regent Wilmot, I always appreciate so much your perspective and your willingness to share your perspective <clears throat> and the convictions that you have. I'm a person of great conviction myself, so I have a lot of appreciation for another person who's unafraid to share their convictions, especially in a, in a public setting, so thank you for that. I do want to say philosophically, uh, as chancellor at UNL, that one of the things that I have said to both Elizabeth and Paul Peckish before Elizabeth and to Pete uh, and to our leadership team is that a tuition increase does not take the place of and is not instead of us doing the hard work of being physically conservative and making the hard decisions that need to be made about where we are now and what our future looks like. Uh, it's very difficult for me to see a way forward that doesn't include a tuition increase, but the tuition increase is another tool in our toolbox. It doesn't replace the need for us to make hard decisions. And I hope that as the meeting has progressed this morning, that you've seen evidence of UNL really digging in and making some hard decisions, both in letter and in spirit of what the board is asking us to do. So with this tuition increase, you'll see us come back, if it's approved, you'll see us come back with ongoing efforts to right our ship, to be physically conservative, and to do both in letter and in spirit the things that the board is asking us to do. Thank you for the opportunity to make comments, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, Chairman, Chancellor, I, I now feel obligated to make comments. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I've been waiting for this to hear it'll you very speak brief. It'll, be, it'll be very brief. Um, my colleagues, fellow chancellors, have been very articulate and clear, as have board members, in, in describing the, uh, the rationale uh, and the need for this increase. I would only add a uh, statement about comparators. And it's not always about comparing with other institutions, but in reality, our nine other peer institutions uh, officially um, endorsed by the Board of Regents, with this increase, we still remain last amongst the 10 in the group. If one looks at our athletic conference, the MIAA, 
we are uh, second from the last amongst those 11. Only Fort Hayes State University uh, remains slightly below us. Uh, they don't have a Purdue magic, but they have a special kind of circumstance with a very significant uh, physical presence in China, phys physical presence, and that causes them to have some leverage in terms of a different approach to uh, uh, subsidizing the needs that they have. So in short, uh, I'm in complete agreement with uh, uh, the sound rationale that's been presented, and I appreciate the opportunity to make this comparison with our with our groups. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else, Regent? <clears throat> um, I know that we've spent a while talking about this, but I think it's important <coughs> that we hear about the student's perspective as well. Um, I am in support of this budget, and I really appreciate your perspective, Regent Wilmot. It, it is frust frustrating. Tuition increases are frustrating for students, and for UNMC students, this is even our second time paying tuition. Um, so it, it is a bit of a sore spot. However, I, we would not be pursuing another degree if we didn't care more about quality education, and this budget maintains that for us. Um, and along with the quality of the education, our everyday experience would also be maintained. Um, so overall, in, uh, in favor of advancing toward our investments for UNMC students, the main one would be the Kearney Rural Health Complex. That would affect us most. Um, I think that this is fair, while uncomfortable, but uh, is a responsible step. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Regents. Um, first of all, thank you, President Kaborik, for the proposed budget. Um, I'd just like to say that Nebraska students uh, want and deserve a quality education. And I believe that this proposed budget has a lot of promise. I believe that it has a vision behind it, uh, which is important, especially in times of uh, deficit or shortfall, and it can be lost. Um, I was originally on the fence about uh, tuition increase considering last year's increase as well on top of, you know, cost of groceries and overall cost of living. Uh, but I do believe that this budget has a vision and the tuition increase plays an important role in setting us up for success uh, through strategic, strategic investments. But uh, this budget and tuition increase will alleviate cuts our campuses will have to make uh, if tuition does not increase as well. And um, we will have to allow for each campus to better provide our quality education that us students strive for. Um, I'd also just like to add that in my capacity as student body president at UNK, uh, I'll be working to offer more resources and services to students so that our students get full value of the money that they spend, whether through this increased tuition uh, or the fees we increased as well. Please. All right, I'll try to make this short, um, no. but I understand that this is a significant burden, um, a tuition increase it's placing on their students students and their families, um, but college does represent a major investment for my peers, and I recognize the hard work of students and their families that they put into financing their education. Um, but with that being said, my experience on Lincoln's campus has shown me that students highly value a quality education, justifying its cost. Um, and after a pause in tuition increases in recent years, I believe that providing students with high quality education and learning experiences and high quality services ne necessitates the current price tag. Um, and with the increase of 129 per day per student, UNL maintains the second lowest tuition in the Big Ten, which other people have said, but I think that's a really important pride, point of pride for affordability. And the burden of the budget deficit cannot lie solely on students, um, which we appreciate the Nebraska administration's efforts to minimize the financial impact on students with this proposal. And then lastly, I'm pleased that the Nebraska Promise Program protects students with the greatest financial need, ensuring education remains accessible to all. Okay. Anyone else? I would just mention, <clears throat> Chancellor you, Bennett, you said you'd be coming back to us later with some of the things to try and make these cuts, and, and I appreciate that. And I guess that's something else I would mention, too, that I guess in the future I'll be interested in seeing what this eleven and a half million dollars of cuts that are unidentified will be. I I have a great interest in that. 
I will be watching. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, appreciate all the comments and questions and so forth. I have a question for uh, President Kaborik. Does this budget contain funding for DEI initiatives and programming? I would uh, I would ask my chancellors. I, I believe obviously we have uh, offices of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and, and uh, you know no decisions have been made to eliminate at that point. So I think the answer would be yes. There would be okay. some of that in there. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it, it does. Uh, I think as the board will recall, last year at UNL, I approved uh, about $800,000 in cuts to our Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Uh, those cuts did not totally eliminate the office, but significantly reduced both personnel and programming. Uh, and as we think about our future in light of the environment that we're in, we are engaged with ongoing conversations about how we reimagine what we're doing in that particular space. But to answer your question, there are still funds that support the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Yes, Chair, um, we do. And currently, our Office of Inclusion have two members, and they also support Disability Alliance, First Generation Guild, Military Connection, Christian Faculty and Staff Fellowship. So, yeah, the funding will support those. That remains the same, Mr. Chair, Chairman at uh, University of Nebraska at Kearney, and proportionally, like UNL, we've identified prospectively $90,000 that can be cut. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> lastly, uh, at the Med Center, uh, an awful lot of this is really the choice of nomenclature as to how programs are supported. Uh, we do an awful lot of work uh, in supporting uh, those that have served our nation in the cloth of our country through our veterans programs. Uh, we have programs that support individuals with uh, multiple types of disabilities. Uh, we have programs uh, that support active military and the work we do with the Department of Defense and a whole lot more. We are in an active process of looking at those programs and looking at the use of very specific words. In many instances, people uh, who may carry a title that may use one of those words, uh, that represents a <clears throat> tiny percentage of their work effort. And, uh, and being able to clean that up and be crystal clear as to what would qualify and what would not qualify is definitely uh, a work in progress, uh, Regent Schaefer, and we take it extremely seriously. OK, thank you. Um, I'm having a hard time supporting a, a budget that's increasing tuition that supports DEI at a time when we're cutting programs, cutting jobs and positions and services to our students. So uh, with that being said, I'll, I will be voting no. Any other comments? If not, please call the roll. Regent Thevaraju? Yes. Regent Herbin? Yes. Regent Schroeder? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Weitz? Yes. Regent Wilmot? No. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. Regent Schaefer? No. Regent Shear? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Um, I've, I've been doing this 27 years, and that's one of the most uh, thoughtful um, conversations we've had around the budget so I appreciate everyone's comments your perspectives as I said it's not a perfect budget but I think it's going to put us in a strong position going forward and I, I'm, I'm really excited I echo Dr. Gold um, our best days are ahead of us and um, and uh, I'm ready to move forward with that uh, we will move on to item 11 b7 which seeks your approval of the renewal of the fm global property insurance policy for the period july 1 2024 through july 1 2025 and we've talked a lot about it going to the grocery store and seeing prices increase and and any of you that have bought a an insurance policy recently also mm -hmm. see that uh in your in your statement um and we are we are not precluded from that so um, just like us, we have a uh, you know extensive um, physical plant uh, that we have to insure, and um, so we are seeing increases uh, on those insurance policies. But in addition, we, as we continue to expand our campuses and you know build new buildings, you know we are increasing the valued 
that we have to insure. So those two things combined are, are seeing an increase in the insurance policy uh, for our facilities. So, um, and per your per your policies, any any expenditure over five million dollars requires your approval, and so that's why it's becoming before you today. So, uh, this item was reviewed by the business finance committee, and I recommend it to you for your approval. Okay. Is there? <laughs> okay, we have a motion to approve item eleven B seven. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion, please. Take just a brief moment here. Okay, again, is there any discussion? Regent Shear. Well, well, just to uh, piggyback on uh, President Kaborek's comments, you know, we spent an hour and a half talking about a budget, and it was <clears throat> the tuition going up 3.5%. And here's just one of the expenses, and granted, it's not 10% of our budget, but it's just another example that trying to live within a 3 or 3.5% 3 increase on a total when everything else is going up 10 or 15% uh, makes it just that much more difficult. And I, I, I I think this is nice to have as a reminder that um, I think all the regents as well as the administration and, and our chancellors and everyone down the line uh, has done a lot to try to improve uh, the university system while trying to maintain the expenses and reducing them where we can, but sometimes we don't have any control over those expenses. And so consequently, you know, we still have to equate our income and our expenses, and that makes difficult choices. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Regent I had Kenny? One, uh, similar, you know, we talk about uh, just the insurance part, but how about health insurance for the university? How about utilities? And you talked about uh, spending $100 million more than we did 10 years ago, but, you know, those things eat it up in a big hurry. Okay, anyone else? Please call the roll. Regent Herbin? Yes. Regent Schroeder? Yes. Regent Saveraju? Yes. 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 Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Item 11B8 seeks your approval and authorization to execute a new cellular neutral host distributed antenna system for Memorial Stadium. Regent Kenny will be giving a lecture later on what, uh, what a neutral host distributed antenna <laughs> system is. Um, as part of a continued effort to improve the fan experience at Memorial Stadium, as well as to provide better cell service within the stadium for teams, coaches, staff, and game support personnel, Nebraska Athletics proposes to enter into a contract with Verizon for the inst installation of a neutral distributed, distributed antenna system, also known as DAS. The DAS will provide coverage for 95% of the stadium, and other cell carriers will have an opportunity to in enter into agreements with Verizon to use the DAS as well. I think it's really important to uh, to stress that there will be no cost to athletics for the installation of the DAS, <clears throat> and Verizon will pay monthly rent to athletics at a commercially reasonable rate for the 10-year term plus a potential five-year extension. Uh, the item was reviewed by the Business and Finance Committee, and I recommend it to you for your approval. Is there a motion to approve item 11B8? So move. Motion in a second. We have to make Uh, <laughs> I, I was just going to have uh, uh, Chris give a, a vision of what this means. So uh, I think, um, you know, I think this has started off. The vision is improved cellular service um, in the stadium. I'm seeing, I think many of us have been at the games, and, um, you know, it, it's not a, not a pleasant experience, and I think that was heard uh, loud and clear in some of the surveys that were conducted by athletics uh, several years ago, and so I think, um, but in order to provide that better service, you have to have the infrastructure in place to do it. It's not just buying uh, b bigger and better widgets. Um, you have to have the infrastructure in place. So this is a uh, athletics actually engaged in a consultant who has expertise in this area, who, who came in and 
gave us a variety of uh, options and, and with the consultant's um, uh, recommendation, this is the path forward that they, they recommended we go. And uh, we were fortunate to find a partner. Uh, you know, uh, this was offered to a number of uh, cellular carriers uh, to partner with us. And we were fortunate that Verizon has, has indicated they would like to, to partner with, with us on this. And so, um, you know, and this will take some time. I don't believe, um, you know, we'll probably see significant improvement for this football season. But in time, um, you know, when you go to the, from the stadium or to the game, um, you know, the ultimate vision is you're going to have um, much better Wi-Fi access than you have today. Regent Whites. Um, my question is, it, as we look at possible changes to the stadium over the next few years, and we don't, we haven't clarified exactly what those changes will be, does this impact the installation of this new Wi-Fi system in the stadium, or will it have to be, will they be working with whatever changes? Are going to be done. Yeah, yeah. Good question. I, uh, obviously, we we would not do anything, put it up, and have to tear it down um, in a couple of years. So that's this has been incorporated in the planning part portion of, of whatever those changes might be. And to echo your sentiment, you know, those obviously will be brought back to the board before any any changes uh, come forward. So, so the short answer to your question is no. This will not be impacted by any future stadium improvements. Regent Kenny. One more, since we have our. Our technology guy here. What security problems do you uh, envision this? And there's, is it 100% uh, secure or? Thank you for the question, uh, Regent Kenny. So what we're talking about today is purely a cellular function. And so that is completely managed as your personal phone would be today from a Verizon or that carrier specifically. So this does not rely on university infrastructure or security processes. But like uh, I go get a hot dog and a pop and I use my credit card. Can they? Uh... That, that would be different than this. So this is purely your cell phone connectivity. Kind of we are engaged with uh, President Kaborik's leadership in athletics with that type of infrastructure conversation upcoming with the stadium remodel. Any other discussion? I, I would just mention that I'll Regent. be abstaining since my husband works for Verizon. Okay, thank you <laughs> for sharing. Anyone else? If not, please call the roll. Regent Schroeder? Yes. Regent Devaraju? Yes. Regent Herbin? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Abstain. Regent Clare? Yes. Penny? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Regent Weitz? The motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item 11B9 seeks your approval and authorization to execute a contract with an outside food service <coughs> vendor in Nebraska Athletics' new performance nutrition facility in the Osborne Legacy Complex. As Nebraska Athletics nears completion of the new performance <coughs> nutrition center, it is looking to take advantage of the improved layout and equipment and engage with a third-party vendor to increase customizable food options while supporting the nutritional needs of student-athletes. As the result of an RFP process, Nebraska Athletics has selected Flick International Group to provide this service. Flick works with athletics nutrition staff to understand the needs of each team and athlete and to educate athletes on how their diet affects their performance. Flick currently works with several NFL franchises, but this is going to be their first collegiate property. Athletics has negotiated a five-year contract with Flick with the potential to extend for another five-year term. This item was reviewed by the Business and Finance Committee, and I recommend it to you for your approval. Is there a motion to approve item 11B9? So move. Second. Any discussion? Regent Shear. Uh, real quickly, because we've talked a lot about finances, this is part of the athletic department. And so I don't want uh, the general public to think that now we're spending more uh, university dollars on food service for athletics. This is a self-sustained uh, product of the uh, athletic department. They pay for it out of their raised funds, and it has no impact on the ultimate of the university's uh, package that we've talked about as far as the budget. 
Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> Having none, please call the roll. Regent Devaraju? Yes. Regent Herbin? Yes. Regent Schroeder? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Weitz? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Item 11B10 seeks your approval and authorization to execute a ground lease with Sullivan Development <clears throat> Company for the real property currently de designated at parking lot 64 at UNMC. UNMC continues to work to provide alternative housing for its students, staff, and <coughs> faculty. Under this ground lease, Sullivan Development Company will construct, lease, maintain, and manage residential row housing to help increase the availability of housing to campus and the surrounding community. The item was reviewed by the Business and Finance Committee and I recommend it to you for your approval. Is there a motion to approve item 11B10? So move. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Having none, please call the roll. Regent Devaraju? Yes. Regent Herbin? Yes. Regent Schroeder? Yes. <clears throat> Regent Kenny? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Weitz? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Item 11B11 seeks your approval and authorization to execute change order number one to the construction agreement with Valley Corporation for the Saddle Creek Public Improvements Project at UNMC. Uh, as you probably recall, the board approved phases one and two of the Saddle Creek infrastructure improvements back in 2022. Now with additional funding provided by the City of Omaha, UNMC is seeking approval of phase three, which includes additional improvements along Saddle Creek from Leavenworth to Farnham streets. In order to complete phase three, the contract with Valley Corporation will need to be increased by the change order. This item was reviewed by the Business and Finance Committee and I recommend it to you for your approval. Is there a motion to approve item 11B11? Motion in a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Regent Herbin? Yes. Regent Schroeder? Yes. Regent Devaraju? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. Regent Weitz? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. That brings us to our last item. Item 11B12 seeks your approval and authorization to dispose of the property and improvements located at 428 South 38th Street in Omaha, known as the International House. Uh, historically, the house has been used as student housing but has remained primarily vacant for approximately three years. And based on estimated costs for renovation and the limitations on repurposing the structure, UNMC has determined that it is in the best interest to dispose of the property and invest the proceeds in a higher and better use. The item was reviewed by the Business and Finance Committee and I recommend it to you for your approval. Is there a motion to approve item 11B12? Second. Any discussion? Yes, I'd like to know what are our plans? Chancellor? Sure, the, uh, the property uh, will be <clears throat> offered for sale uh, and, uh, and hopefully uh, generate a fair market value rate. And, and when that occurs, uh, we will, of course, bring it back uh, to the Board of Regents uh, for approval. The, the property, first of all, is uh, very underutilized. Secondly, the loss of this property will have no programmatic effect on international student enrollment as the board has been gracious enough to approve other housing projects in previous board cycles. And, and thirdly, uh, it is outside the domains of what we consider our facilities uh, master plan. So for all of those reasons, uh, I think it's a reasonable thing to uh, sell this property. And uh, again, uh, when the time comes to do so, we'll uh, bring it back to the board for approval. Okay, any further discussion? Having none, please call the roll. Regent Schroeder? Yes. Regent Devaraju? Yes. Regent Herbin? Yes. Regent Schaefer? Yes. Regent Shear? Yes. Regent Stark? Yes. 
Regent Whites? Yes. Regent Wilmot? Yes. Regent Clare? Yes. Regent Kenny? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. There are also a number of uh, reports at the end of your agenda for your review. I accept the reports listed in the agenda on behalf of the board. There being no further business, and if there's no objection, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.